now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, live from New York, it's the Ramble with Alex, it's me, I'm Alex Bennett, and hi, how are you everybody? Uh, how do you like that spiffy new opening? We, uh, we redid the opening a bit to kind of freshen it up, make it a little... A little uh, more, even glossier than it was before. Anyway. Uh, hi, how are you? What's happening? Okay? Yeah. I have something I'm going to play for you right now. Uh, before we, and this could lead into discussion, I suppose. Um, uh, I was going to uh, run a, a thing tonight, a comedian tonight, but uh, uh, I'm going to save it for tomorrow night because this thing happened today. And I saw it and I just said, I... I got to play this for my audience because it's just, you know, you know, I have become a big fan of Mario, Mario, I keep saying Mario, Andrew Cuomo, who was the governor of the state of New York. I never had feelings about him one way or the other until this whole COVID thing hit and he started doing daily programs. He did a daily press conference. Uh, to give his opinion of what was going on and to give everybody a pep talk and to give them no nonsense uh, uh, discussions about what was happening and how it was happening and whether it was a problem or not a problem. And you know, you got to believe the guy because the guy was just perfectly honest. If things weren't good, he didn't tell you they were better than they were. He told you exactly how it was and told us exactly what we could do to mitigate the problem. And as a result, we took this, this steep mountain that just went right up, right? And then we just bent the curve and brought it down and down and down and down to where we have now gone a solid month as of today without, uh, um, uh, uh, with an infection rate below 1%. Today, I think it was 0.94. It's gone up a little bit, you know, but it has been for a solid month below 1%. And he said, you really can't expect better than that, okay? But we do expect better than that. We've seen better than that. Five deaths today. Uh, intubations were down. Uh, hospitalizations were down. So all in all, he, you know, he saved my life, and he saved the life of a lot of New Yorkers with his talk and his uh, his pep talks and his uh, uh, telling us what we should and should not do. And uh, I also like him because he's real. He's a real New Yorker, you know, real New York. So today, he's been, for the last week or so, been going out after Donald Trump for something which is really quite terrible. As you know, he, Trump says he doesn't want to give Democratic states any funds to combat the coronavirus. Uh, he has said, uh, they, they, I'm not going to give Democratic states the money because they've been just spending the money. And Of course we spend the money. We have to spend the money. But he's not allocating any money to, like, us and Washington, D.C. and uh, Oregon and, I think, Washington and California. Uh, and, and where are we going to get the money to run our states? Because the government always pitches in a certain amount of money to the states to help defray the expenses of running things like the police department, the fire department, uh, 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 teach uh, schools, things like that. And so the, the, uh, he's been faced with a, a terrible thing here, uh, Cuomo, without being able to get any funds to take care of this whole thing and having to figure out where the money is coming from, okay? So today he went on another one of his rants, and I thought it was especially good, and I thought I would share that part of his press conference with you because it, it says everything you want to know about 
what a terrible, terrible president Donald Trump is. This is Andrew Cuomo, the gov. Washington is doing absolutely nothing. Uh, they're going back and forth with gridlock. Uh, this was the last piece of legislation that they were supposed to pass to handle the aftermath of COVID, and they haven't done it. Uh, the Republican Senate doesn't want to fund state and local governments, and that's the sticking point. Not to fund state and local governments, but to provide all the money that they did to businesses. But you're not going to provide funding to state and local governments who basically support police, fire, hospitals, and schools. It's just totally ludicrous to me. Uh, and it starts with the president. There was a uh, headline in the Daily News once, uh, Ford to City Drop Dead. And the city was outraged. Ford wouldn't provide financial resources. Uh, what Ford did pales in comparison to what Trump is doing. Not only did he tell New York City to drop dead, Trump is actively trying to kill New York City. It is personal. I think it's psychological. He is trying to kill New York City. He passed SALT, which was targeted just at New York City. Tax reform cost us $14 billion. He's refused to fund the extension of the Second Avenue subway from 96 to 125th Street. Every prior administration has funded the Second Avenue subway. It has always been a federal state partnership. Only this president, a former New Yorker, refuses to fund the Second Avenue subway. Even after we opened it up to 96th Street uh, and did an amazing turnaround on the construction project that everybody celebrated. He won't approve the air train to LaGuardia. And you want to talk about uh, really ironic, repugnant logic. You know why he won't approve the air train to LaGuardia? He says he has to do an environmental review statement. The same president who has lamented about the delay of environmental reviews and how they take so long and they stop development and how bad the secret process is and how the environmentalists are all full of baloney when it comes to Anwar. But now he says, I can't approve the air train from LaGuardia that's been talked about for decades because I have to do an environmental review. Now Trump, as the environmental bureaucrat, how incredible is that? He won't approve congestion pricing for the MTA. What does he have to do with congestion pricing? Nothing. It is just gratuitous. It's just gratuitous. There's no federal involvement in congestion pricing. Their approval is purely technical. And it's been over a year. We passed it in New York State. He won't approve it. He won't rebuild the tunnels between New York and New Jersey that are dangerous. They are Amtrak tunnels. Do you know who owns Amtrak? Who owns Amtrak? The federal government owns Amtrak. They're his tunnels. They're decaying. I went to the tunnel. I took a video of water seeping into the tunnel. I took a video of bricks crumbling. I sent him the video. He watched the video. Still no money to fund the Amtrak tunnels. This weekend, they stopped FEMA funding from closing, from cleaning schools and trains. We want students to go back. We want schools to reopen. But you don't want to clean the schools? Students should go back to a dirty school? Is that what you want your child to do? Gratuitous and arbitrary. And now 
No federal funds for New York City and New York State post-COVID. Donald Trump caused the COVID outbreak in New York. Donald Trump caused the COVID outbreak in New York. That is a fact. It's a fact that he admitted, and the CDC admitted, and Fauci admitted, the China virus, the China virus, the China virus. It was not the China virus. It was the European virus that came to New York. They missed it. They missed it. The China virus went to Europe. It got on a plane. It went to Europe. They never even thought of the possibility. And then three million Europeans got on the plane and came to New York. And they brought the virus. January, they brought the virus. February, they brought the virus. March, they brought the virus. And in mid-March, the federal government is a travel ban from Europe. Mid-March, too little, too late, Mr. President, he caused the COVID outbreak in New York. Donald Trump and his incompetent CDC and his incompetent NIH and his incompetent Department of Homeland Security. Department of Homeland Security. We are going to protect the people of this nation. We're not going to let the immigrants come across the southern border. We're going to create a wall. Why did you stop the virus? The virus killed many more Americans than anything you were worried about on the southern border. This nation loses more people per day to COVID than any nation on the globe. Do you hear that point? We lose more people per day to COVID than any nation on the globe. You know who did that? Donald Trump's incompetence. And now they won't provide federal funding to help repair the damage from the ambush they created. That's where we are. Federal government must provide a response. If they don't provide a response, the national economy will suffer for years. Every economist says that. Uh, they don't want to provide a response. Why? Because they're playing politics. They don't want to help democratic states. They don't want to help democratic cities, right? This is a war on cities. New York City, Portland, Chicago, right? These are the enemies from the president's point of view. Look at his tweets. These are the locations and the outposts of the enemies. So don't provide them any funding, even though we caused the COVID virus. Uh, it is an unsustainable position for the federal government. Uh, either this president will figure it out or the next president will figure it out. If the Congress doesn't figure it out, there'll be mayhem in this country and there will be a different Congress in January. That is my political opinion. In the interim, we have to be smart. We've gone through tough times before in New York. We had the fiscal crisis of the 70s, post 9-11. Uh, I experienced it. It was a whole disruptive period. We went through the Great Recession. But we have to be smart. We have to be smart. We have to be financially smart. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to come together and figure this out in the interim before we have a federal government that is sane and functional. The good news is, this is going to be a challenge. Yeah. Nothing like the challenge we just went through. COVID was the challenge of our lifetime. COVID was the challenge of our lifetime. I hope and pray. But compared to what we went through with COVID, dealing with the fiscal crisis uh, is a mere bump. And we'll get through it, and we'll get through it together, because we're New York tough, smart, united, disciplined most of all loving.
There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. That's Mario. That's Mario doing that. Keep thinking about his father, Andrew Cuomo, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if every state had a governor just like him, what a wonderful place this would be. I mean, he just, he takes politicians and the government to the woodshed. And he's right. You know, you, know, you don't make a, a city suffer because you don't like it. You know, Donald Trump, he talked about him having something pathological against New York City. And I, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It's because New York City always looked upon him as a joke. The press looked upon him as a joke. The people who lived here looked upon him as a joke. They knew the fraud that he was, and he never, he, I'm sure, in his desire, was out to get even. I mean, look at him with, with Obama. I mean, he's out to get Obama. Why? Because I think of the White House uh, press uh, dinner they have every year, and Obama got up and made some jokes about Donald. And John Donald doesn't have a sense of humor about himself. And so he, he has this pathological thing about Obama. So much so that according to, I think it's, it's uh, Michael, what's his name, who, who was his lawyer who just wrote this book, he went out and hired a uh, look-alike Obama to come to the, uh, to the Oval Office and videotaped him firing Obama. I mean, how pathological is that? Well, that same pathological hatred of Obama uh, he has for New York City. He has it not because New York is democratic, not because it's considered quite liberal. He hates it because New York hated him. Okay? And with good reason. He's an asshole. All right? Anyway, I, I, I love what uh, uh, Cuomo has done. I think he articulates it better than just about anybody I know. And I wanted to share that with you. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you enjoyed what you heard. Because uh, uh, he's worth listening to. Well, let me see now. It's time now for us to, uh, let me see here. I've got to go to uh, our uh, our thing here. Uh, but there's nobody waiting there. Okay. Uh, it, nobody's waiting yet to get on. But we, we use Zoom. And if you don't know how to use Zoom, uh, just go to gabnet.net. And uh, on the right-hand side of the page, in the middle of the page, it says, click here to join our Zoom and it immediately does it for you. It might ask you if you want to get Zoom, but if you don't want to have Zoom, then don't worry about it. Um, it'll still allow you to go through and, and do what you got to do, okay? All right, let me bring some of the people in here. Um, it's kind of interesting. Let me, let, me just, uh, let me just change this, okay? Uh, there's the Zoom panel. Let me see here. Let, let them in and let him in. And let him in. So, so far we have uh, Charlie, we have Robert Natali, and we have Jeff Stein. Hi, everybody. How are you this evening? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, Jeff, how are you? Oh, you got to turn your mic on because your mic isn't on. And uh, Charlie, how's everything down in Texas? I imagine still infected, right? Well, it's hard to tell since they're not reporting stats. What? Well, I mean, I think they're not. All of a sudden, the numbers drop to like a, a fifth of what they were for no explanation. We didn't do anything different. We didn't try anything different. I think they just stopped, they just quit reporting the actual figures. Hmm. They didn't want to admit things are bad, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robert, how, how are you doing where you are over in Jersey? We're doing fine. Yeah. We're pr probably following New York uh, in mirror fashion. I'll tell you, do, do me a favor. Uh, go up to that little shield up there where you go to your preferences on, and, and go to audio and just maybe give yourself a little more audio. It just seems to be a little on the low side. No. Uh, yeah. So I just, you know, I just want everybody to hear your dulcet tones. Ooh. Yeah. Is that yeah. better? Yeah, yes. much better. Yeah. Uh, did you just hear what I played with Andrew Cuomo? Yeah. Yes. Was he right on the button? Of course. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, I, 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 he's gotten to absolutely hate Trump. I mean, and with good reason, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, he, uh, he, uh, and he hates him for us because he, he, he's doing the same thing to New Jersey, too. He's, New Jersey isn't getting money they're supposed to get. You know, every year in the United States, each state puts in a proportionate amount of money to this pool, and then when a hurricane happens or the state needs money or a state has a, a, a deficit that they've got to take care of, uh, they go to that pot and take the money out. Every year, New York puts in billions, okay? And when they need it, they've got nothing. On the other hand, uh, Mitch McConnell's state, what's that, North Carolina, something like that? Kentucky. Kentucky. Kentucky um, took out from the government something like $40 billion and never paid a penny in, you know? I mean, it's just like we pay the bills for, for the whole country. Now we need this country's help, you know? A lot of money has been spent in this state to bend that curve and to go out and medically do what has to be done. And um, for Trump to not allow people to be, you know... Uh, for this state to get any money. And, I mean, things like the Second Avenue subway and the, the train to the plane uh, and things like that. You know, it, we, like he was talking about, it, it's just ridiculous. You know, and then he's saying he wants an environmental study before he allows the the train to be put in. Who is this the environmental president? Yeah. Is this yeah. the guy who, who has said, oh, we've got to go by these environmental impact studies? No. Yeah. No. As a matter of fact, he's tried to kill anything that would uh, would do it, you know. So, whatever. So here we are, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm waiting for some other people to call. I'm sure they will call. Um, they don't start calling till about eleven o'clock our time. Because don't you don't you find yourself wishing that there were more uh, prominent Democrats who fought? with that kind of spunk and were made themselves heard and well i don't I, I don't fight. i don't know that there are other politicians that do i don't know that biden could do that kind of approach it's it's a new york thing you know it's a new york fuck me fuck you you know approach to stuff and uh that's why i like him He's so New York, and he handles these problems in a very New York way. And uh, you may, uh, you know, uh, uh, he doesn't care if Trump is pissed off at him or not. You know, he's going to call him out. And we, you know, we deserve to get, get money. We deserve to be helped out here. We spent a lot of money bending this curve. And by bending this curve, we also prevented maybe even a bigger outbreak nationally than we have already. And the point he made was, you know, we have, uh, it, we have, it, it's so bad that we have more people dying every day in this country than anywhere else on the face of the planet. Than anywhere else on the face of the planet. Oh yeah, he comes on and says, oh no, we're better than the other countries because proportionately, it doesn't matter, dead is dead. We got a hundred thousand. We got ten, a thousand people a day who are dying. By probably the end of this month, we will go over that two hundred thousand mark. Which, quite frankly, I didn't even believe we would hit a long time ago. What were you going to say, Charlie? No, I was agreeing with you. We're going to definitely go over two hundred thousand by the end of September. He should be ashamed of himself for that. And then he's going around saying, and we might have a, a vaccine by, well, I won't say what the day is, but you know what oh. we're talking about. That's yeah, he, he's trying to say we're, we may have one by the election. You, you, know, know. What he, you know what he's hoping? Here, here's where he's playing both sides of the coin. He realizes that because of the mail-in ballots and things like that, People are going to be voting early. In some cases, people are voting right now. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he wants to get their vote now. 
So if he promises there might be, you know, a, a vaccine by election day, he's hoping that will make people vote for him. Because when election day gets here and there isn't a vaccine, and ask, 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 ask was it Zeneca, uh, what's the name of the company? AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca, who is partnered with Oxford in, in England, uh, has said that the, the uh, vaccine they have has got problems. And the problem is that somebody got very ill from taking it. And until they know why, they can't even be able, I don't think they can even go into phase three. And that was the most promising one. So, you know, I mean, what's he doing? He's trying to promise that something's coming because he's hoping that if you're going to mail your ballot in today, you'll vote for him. It's ridiculous. You know, you know Alex, there, there are two... Um, doctors who appear on TV by the last name of Gupta. One is Sanjay Gupta, who's on CNN, but there's also Dr. Vin Gupta, who appears on right. MSNBC quite often. Wait, well, all networks now are required to have a Gupta, a Gupta as their yeah, medical. It's, it's, it's a yeah. requisite. Yeah, it's exactly that. But in any case, Dr. Vin Gupta made a point that really knocked me back in my tracks. He was saying that this vaccine that does come out that hasn't been adequately tested, there will probably be all kinds of reports of side effects, problems, this and that. And what's, what the offshoot of that's going to be is that people are now going to, uh, the number of people who are anti-vaccine are now going to increase. Yeah. And in effect, what it's going to do is it's going to dissuade people from getting vaccines which have been proven to be effective. And so it, it's going to have a ripple effect beyond the fact that it doesn't, you know, prevent coronavirus. Well, well the problem we have is, to begin with, any, uh, uh, any uh, vaccine that comes out only has to be 50% effective in order for it to be approved. So that means if it's 50% effective, people are going to take this thing and not get protection from it. Right. You know, not to the extent that they would get with a lot of other vaccines. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, do we rush this thing or do we wait till we actually have something? And you know something, I got to tell you, the answer to this whole problem lies in one thing, okay? Mm -hmm. That's how we bent the curve here in New York. That's how we brought it down to less than a 1% infection rate. Not that everybody wears one of these, but enough are wearing them that, you know, that it's, 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 it's doing its job. You, you know, wash your hands. Wash your hands, yeah, yeah. I sometimes forget to wash my hands now, but, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah. But yeah. Well, my, my nephew is mm -hmm. a PhD mm -hmm. guy who develops medicine, mm -hmm. things like that. Not particularly that he's working on this one at all, but he said, don't ever take the first one. Mm. He says, they're, they're not gonna be as good enough as, as they needed to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, think, I, I don't think we should rush it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I do, you know, I do realize that we would like to have a, 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 a a vaccine. We'd like to be able to get the economy rolling again. So we would like to have a vaccine, but as badly as we want to have a vaccine, the fact of the matter is, hey, we, you want to have a, have a less than perfect vaccine? Or, uh, that, you know, it's not going to kill you, but it's not going to do the job. Or do you, do you want, uh, you know, do you want a, a working vaccine that you can count on and here's what the problem is. We're, we're making a trade-off. By the way, folks, you know, these lines are open now. Where is everybody tonight? It's, oh, wait a minute. Here comes, oh, well, here comes wear a fucking mask. And I bet that's Brian. I'm, be I'm betting that's Brian. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wear a fucking mask. Of course, it's <laughs> Brian. I knew it was Brian. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Hello, where? You know, um, wear a fucking mask. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we've got, we've got, you know, I mean, there is, a, there's, we don't have a, 
a, what do you call it, we don't have a vaccine, but we certainly do have ways of preventing it. And the fact was that a lot of these states just opened up, or they didn't, they were opened anyway, and they didn't shut down. <clears throat> and what they really needed to do was just shut the hell down. And if we had done that, you know, you strangle the virus. It doesn't have any way of spreading. A vaccine. Hmm? I'm sorry, Brian. No, no, go ahead, Robert. Go ahead. A, a vaccine is 50% effective. So now I go and get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And now my very first question is, mm -hmm. do I go to a restaurant? Do I go to that Halloween party? Do I stay home just the same? In which case, it didn't do me a bit I, of good. I, I, I'm wondering, you know, our governor here in New York is being very, very careful not to reopen indoor eating, indoor dining, uh, much to the chagrin of a lot of, you know, people whose livelihoods are being impacted by that decision. But he has decided not to yet. He's very careful. I wonder if a vaccine came out tomorrow and everybody ran down and started getting it by the hundreds of thousands, all right, would he still allow indoor dining until we saw the effectiveness of the vaccine? Got to see the data. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think necessarily that would open up the economy. Uh, I mean, in some states, yeah, in the idiotic, some of those idiotic southern states who have no science in their mind, you know, but I, I just think, um, I think it's going to be a while before we suddenly say, okay, this seems to work. We can get back. Well, we, we're never going to be able to get back to the way we were. Forget that. You know, if nothing more, we've learned a lesson about how viruses spread. And, you know, I mean... <clears throat> It, who was it? Who's the comedian? Uh, 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 the guy who's on America's Got Talent. Um, Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel. It has been a germaphobe for years. It was always, always told to me, if you're going to interview him, don't shake his hand. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to shake your hand. He doesn't like, he's fr afraid of touching other people and getting, having people touch him. He, you know, I used to think he was crazy. I don't think he's so crazy now. <laughs> You know? you know, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's uh, it's funny. So you talk about Howie Mandel, <clears throat> my friend who's a DJ, just moved down to LA, mm -hmm. and he and he uh, just met Howie Mandel this last weekend, mm -hmm. and he's staying because he's friends with Rob Schneider's brother, who yeah. used to own DNA Lounge. So he's right. a DJ at DNA Lounge, and now he said, "Oh, move down here to do some stuff for LA." So now he's down there. He just met Howie De Mandel this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, um, uh, yeah. I know the the Schneider, Schneider family. Yeah. I think the two yeah, brothers I aren't. I, I, don't, I think the two brothers aren't talking to each other right now. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Some. Some. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I mean, all those other countries, and you see, like Asia. You know, those guys wear masks all the time. They <clears> always <throat> wore masks. When you got a cold, you wore a mask, and you wore a mask because it was the right thing to do. You know. So people in that part of the world are used to this. This is why I think the impact in China wasn't as great as it was, is because I think people immediately, as soon as they saw this happening, and the government said, wear a mask, everybody wore a mask. Because they you probably know. were already doing it, too. Yeah. I, 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 fi I finally came up with an idea. I finally came up with, with a solution. You know, I've been very pissed about the fact that in my neighborhood, the people in this neighborhood do not, a lot of them, seem to be wearing masks. Now, I don't know if this is a racial thing, because I live in a predominantly black neighborhood, so the people I see not wearing masks are black over being white, because there aren't that many white people in my neighborhood. So I don't know if this isn't true everywhere. But here's what I do. Put the mask on, okay? Because, and, and by the way, has anybody had this dream? I've had a dream, recurring dream, where I go out and I forgot my mask. Have, have any of you had that dream? It's my, no, co but it's we, my COVID we, dream. 
Yeah, we've done things. So, like, I go out of my office because in the office, if you have an office, you don't have to wear a mask. So I take my mask off. Mm-hmm. But I've walked out to go to somewhere really quick, and I've taken, like, 15 or 20 steps. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like this shock. And you feel like you're naked, and you walk back to your office to get the mask. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's well, I have the fear that I'm going out, and all of a sudden I go, I forgot my mask. I'm not wearing my mask. But I'm anyway. real life. Huh? I'm doing it in real life. I get all the way to the car, and then I have to get out of the car and go back <laughs> in the apartment and get my mask. Really? You forgot it, huh? Yeah. Son of a bitch. I, I never forget it. I, we've got masks. We have, we've got about 100 masks, 200 masks or something in this house. We, you know. Uh, but but anyway, so I put on my mask when I'm leaving, okay, and I and I start walking down the street, right? Now I come up against somebody who isn't wearing a mask, or if they're wearing a mask, they're wearing it this way, which certainly doesn't work. And the worst is this. I mean, come on, don't even put the thing on, okay? Uh, all you got to do is move it up like this, and now that's right. But what I do is I'm not about ready to tell anybody in my neighborhood, hey, pal, wear a mask. You know, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get killed, all right, if I do that. So here's what I do when I walk past somebody without a mask. And some of them get the idea. You know, but all I do is, well, if you're not going to protect me, I'll protect myself. And I cover my face with my hand. And I, I think some of them may get the idea. Some of them just don't care. They don't really give a crap. You know. Remember when these were just worn by surgeons? Uh, hmm. You know. So. Clean rooms. Yeah. So it, it, it's really, it's really something. I mean, it's. Uh, um, we, and and he, you know, he said something there that really rang very true to me, and that is, this is the worst thing we've gone through in our lifetime. You know, I don't think we've gone through anything worse. Oh, yeah, out in California, you've had some fires and things like that. There are, there are local tragedies. But on an, as a nation, I, I don't think we've seen anything like this, not in our lifetime, you know. And, and um, it's sad. It's sad that, that we can't get people to realize that it's very solvable. All you have to do is just wear a mask, wash your hands. Um, but wear a mask. Washing the hands. Mm-hmm. They, they, there's some question now as to whether this uh, this uh, uh, surfaces surfaces really yeah. can give it to you. But you know, it's not a bad idea to wash your hands anyway. Your mother always told you to wash your <laughs> hands when you came in the house. Yeah. What? You know. Yeah. And, uh, and the, P- huh? the the PP and E is still hard to get. So I told you we're opening these factories, and right now we're getting. Our prepayments in just trying to allocate and reserve, reserve especially the masks and but also gloves and gowns also. So we're trying to reserve all that stuff now. We're just going to put it in a warehouse until we start opening these new plants in about six months because we can't wait three or four months because it may take two or three months just to get the stuff allocated. I thought PPE was pretty uh, pretty available. No, no, the masks are not, especially the masks. We get our PPE from the uh, we get our masks from country that knows how to do it china mm. uh and uh, they they every now and then they send marjorie a hundred masks you know mm. um basically they're all these you know they mm. they asked us if we wanted the n95s and we said no because they're kind of uh, have you ever seen some uh, medical workers who wear the n95s and at the end of the day they've got this like you know yeah. mm. ridge in their face i mean it's it's it and it's not any it's not any more effective necessarily than this you know right. it's just a different kind of mask but see it's it's culture and it's messaging my son has been in china now six straight months mm-hmm. and he says that the culture now has accepted masks to the point where mm-hmm. if you go out without a mask long before any authorities speak to you the populace around you will start shouting at you that you're doing the wrong thing and that you're not being considerate of others. Beyond that, he's required to have an app on his phone, which in effect tracks every single place he goes so that, God forbid, he does take ill, 
they exactly know who he's been in, where he's been, and who he's probably been in contact with. But that's something that Americans will rail against because they'll see it as it's a an invasion of, of privacy, freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the face recognition. You've seen that. I mean, I remember years ago they showed the sidewalk in China and they showed you know this this thing like showing all the faces you know on all the faces walking and doing that face recognition stuff and then everyone's oh my god that can never happen here because yeah it's invasion of privacy and you know what are they going to do yeah and we do we do it we do it already i mean some of our cities have a have a camera on every street corner and then mm -hmm. you go to london you they can they find somebody they think committed a crime they can literally follow him on the cameras down the street Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze here. And by the way, anytime we need masks, I, I get a hold of my son, and within a week, he sends me as many as uh, two or three hundred. He gets them very easily. Yeah. Here, you know, yeah. it's quite that easy, especially back in March when, you know, when oh, you yeah. the fan. Yeah, we're running out in February. February, the weekends, I was still running manufacturing, and we started getting calls saying we're out of masks. And we didn't know what the hell was going on. Mm. And, you know, this is what started happening. Well, I mean, we're, uh, you know, uh, 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 the government should, I mean, well, then where's all this PPE that Trump says they're making? They're stockpiling it. They're stockpiling it? Wow. How easy is it for you? For instance, Charlie, how many masks do you have in the house? Six. Mm -hmm. Where, where'd you get them? Well, my first two were made in March by one of the other umpires. Dick could, Dick could sew, and she sewed a bunch for all of our, all of the umpires. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah. So I had two that way. Yeah. And then uh, I think it was in May, Humana sent sent everybody two masks, so that made four. Yeah. Now they're finally at the store, so I was able at the grocery store to buy a couple of masks a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Well, we're 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 stocked up for the apocalypse here. You know, we have about, I'd say we have 300 masks. You know, and I would, I, I said to Marjorie, I said, you know, really, we should go out on the street. And when we see somebody without a mask, we should have one. one of these. And she goes, no, we don't know if we're going to need all of them. And I went, you know, mm -hmm. all right, you know, these are good, what, for about a week, you know. We got yeah. 300 of them. We're not going to live right. 300 weeks. Right, Gabnet on the corner, small corner. <laughs> yeah, I should have masks Some made. advertising. <laughs> masks made with the GabNet logo. Also, are there places you can go now and get the mask with your face on them? Yeah, I've seen, <laughs> yeah. seen on Facebook. Yeah, yeah I, saw, I saw it online. I saw an ad for that. Yeah. Excuse Char me. Well, he had to blow his nose. Charlie, you know I had three pick in my fantasy football? You know who I had to pick? <laughs> yeah, Exilio Elliott. I had yep. to pick him. Because three, four, and five are terrible. Oh my God! I, got I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I know. Cowboys running back. He knows. Charlie knows. Oh, so okay. I want him to do good, but the Cowboys to lose every game. <laughs> How you doing, Tony? Tony, you 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 have a mask, don't you? Yeah, I'm having a shitty nap. My files, my router blew up. Like it's not working now. I have to go buy a new one for files. I'm using my phone as a hotspot. Uh, right now, so if I break flake. Oh, okay, that's why you're kind of breaking up a little bit. Yeah, if I get too bad, you might have to disconnect me. It's my phone. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your router blew? It's like, it's not seeing my, uh, it's not, it's just like my TV was getting pixelated, so I rebooted it, and I have a net router downstairs to give me more attention. But the main router up here, it just was flaking out, so I reset it. They told me to reset it files. Now it's not even seeing anything on my computer, my network. I can't even log in. They made me reset it, put the password back in, but it's still not seeing anything. It's not, it's not even see, not that it's not seeing the Wi-Fi. I'm even direct. I'm even direct connected to one of my computers. It's not even seeing that. So the guy's like, "You need a new main router." I said, "All right." So okay. I have to go. They're charging me for this fucking thing now. Fine. Well, so they I'm charge you every. No, they charge you. So every, go they go. charge you every month for the router. But who do you? Who do you? Who's your service? Files. Uh, Files. What you can do. Is you can buy the router. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. And then not pay it. and just and not pay a monthly uh, charge. Yeah. That, that's what I'm going to do. I so have why am I going to pay I, you guys I, monthly? I, I, I'm just going to buy it outright. 
I've yet to do that. I don't know why I've yet to do that, because I'm afraid that I'll pull it out and then the new one won't work. And I own it, you know. Yeah. So, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm going to get it tomorrow. Listen to him. He sounds like he's, what is that thing they do with singers? If I get too bad, you can dump me. No. It's because I'm using my it, No, it's almost, no, it's almost funny. It's almost funny. It's like it's like Tony's being auto tuned. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'm playing Nintendo now. I was all pissed off. I was getting ready to finish the game. I'm in the middle of a battle, in the middle of a war in Octopath Travelers. I can't play now tonight. I had my men all strategized. Yeah. Well, I uh, I'm, tomorrow's another day. Yeah, I'm, at least my mother can watch Raymond in the back room because the TV still works. I've got this big urge to like spend some real money here and put in a new I have a raid system and I'm thinking of putting in a second one for all my other hard drives so that I can have them redundant and so on but it's going to cost like a thousand bucks to get into it so, the right way and um, I, so I'm, I'm thinking of, but I'm thinking about doing it there's a place I can rob the money from so whatever anyway and I gotta have a, 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 a implant done to my tooth here. That's gonna cost me a couple of grand. That's great, you know. Oh, Alex, I got, I told Shecky I got dental insurance because you kept talking about it. I I took it out myself. I had to. How much does it cost you a month? It's I got the gold plan. It's costing me fifty a month. Fifty a month. That's not bad. Yeah. And That's how, not bad. And how it's much? Bad. And how much does it pay out? They pay if I get. Uh, I get right off the bat. I get uh, free uh, cleanings and X-rays. Uh, yeah, but I mean, how much? How much does it? In, uh, in other words, I think it pays out. I think it's three thousand or thirty-five hundred. Really? Eighty percent off crowns and fillings. Oh, really? Good. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. Terrific. I took what you could. What, what, what plan? What plan is it? You know, is it? Is it? It's a uh, guardian. Guardian. I have to look yep. it up. Because tomorrow we're going to find out more about our new medical plan, and it's a matter of where do we go to get the best deal on everything. You know. Hmm. But, you know, I remember you saying it. I said, you know, why am I keep going? You know, let me look into dentalists. This, this is just stupid. I'm just Although I, we don't have, I don't have to worry about how much it's going to cost because Marjorie's company pays for it. Oh, they pay it. Okay. They just say, go out and get your insurance, and then we'll pay for it. You know, so. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, but it's. Uh, you now know, I can have rotten teeth again. You can, uh, yeah, you can <laughs> have rotten <laughs> teeth. Well, listen. I'll go over to Hershey Bar. Yeah, your teeth aren't perfect <laughs> now, but man, people should have seen them the way they were before. Oh, yeah. No, no tooth went in the same man. direction. Whoa, look at those teeth. Yeah. I was like jabbing jar from the shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's be honest. Right. So anyway, so um, um, anyway, what, what else is happening? Nah, nothing much is happening. I just, you know, I just uh, am so uh, depressed about this country and the state that it's in. Uh and Trump's been yelling about, oh, hey, you know, the stock market's back up yeah. where it should be. No, it's going back down again. Yeah. I lost this dropped what, about 1,000 in oh. a couple of days? I lost 10% today. I almost vomited in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. You know. It was a bad. <laughs> Don't you wish you could just invest in comic books? That would mm. be, you know. You know, that's a good point, but Shecky was talking about this, we were discussing it one time. He made an excellent point, and I have to agree. One thing I, I love my comic stocks because there's a personal connection, you know, connection to it. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I love about stock, I can just call up my broker and say, "Sell ten shares." With a comic, I gotta find the seller. <laughs> I have to make sure the money clears, mm -hmm. and it's a lot more. You know, it's you can't control as much. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And. And he's like he said, it's only worth as much as somebody will give it to you. I mean, I'm not afraid to sell some, but let's say you sell some, you got to hope the guy wants, then you got to haggle with him. I'd only want it yeah. this much. Yeah. You know. Here comes you have insurance here, for those. Here comes Brie. Yeah, I actually do. Actually, uh, I have it through, uh, not my homeowners. My brother has it under, well, it's under another policy. Well, I had to do a whole oh. spreadsheet. Anything over $1,000, I had to take a picture and he had to come to the house and see it. Oh wow, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Bree has joined us, and and Bree isn't in the garden working, uh, and uh, I figured maybe he'd be welding today or something like that. Yeah. Hello, Bree. How are you? All good. Can you hear me? Turn yourself up a little bit. Uh, boy, I don't know how to do that. 
I'm on an old computer, so that could be it. Yeah, well, you can uh, you can go up to uh, the see the little, the very top, see that little green shield. Green shield. There's a green shield at the top. You don't have that on yours. No. What kind of computer do you have? Well, this is a. Oh, here I can click on my uh, my microphone thing. It says. Yeah. Microphone, yes, same app yes, system. you can do it there. You can do it there. Yes. Uh, speakers and microphone, audio settings. Mm-hmm. Is on. that it? Yeah, and then you can like I think you, if it. Oh it, yeah, there we go. You can bring the Got level it. up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can do that. See? So I take off the automatic. And yeah. Say I want to do it, and there we go. There How you about go. That? Oh, that's fine. See? Oh, yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now we're cooking with gas. No. Now you got a voice. Yeah. Now you got a voice. <laughs> Now you're gonna you're gonna hear uh, K-pop in the background because my daughter's watching BTS in the other room on the big screen. Oh, okay. Well, uh, 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 the um, uh, you were making some comments earlier uh, about uh, about Cuomo. It, were you, were you positive yeah. or negative on him? I, I I'm the same with you. I I don't really think anything about him. Uh, I I definitely like that what he's doing now, but uh, it has no effect. You know, in, in today's USA, everything is viewed through partisan lens lenses. So anything he says is, oh, that's the Democrats, that's New York. And, and, but, uh, but, 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 but he has done stuff uh, to change stuff uh, in the way in which he's, uh, he's administered this, this virus. Uh, so, you know, he, it is, it, he's the guy you can listen to because he does articulate it well. There's no and question of it. I think history will, will favor that, but I think in the current climate, it's not going to happen. You know what's interesting is, though, you know, Trump confounds, confounds me because, as I said, some days he says things that I agree with. Um, I, he's all over the map, but the one thing he was pointing out today was this relationship between the Pentagon and uh, sort of war contractors. You know, the... the military industrial complex, you know, and now there's a new term for that, and I forget what it is, but, you know, he was pointing that out, and the generals are now, you know, coming back to defend that. He is, in a way, uh, he is an alternative choice. I mean, if you have to agree, if you vote for Biden, you have to agree that you want things to go back to the way they were, and you have to say, you yeah. know, it's like in the in the radio business for a long time. I remember they said, you know, Arbitron is not accurate, but it's the only system that, that that's there. So it's like, you know, it, it, a vote. That's that's why it's confounding for me. Trump is not a. He's not always what you think every day. He, you know, he surprises me on occasion. Or he distracts you. Does the, yeah, the, that's so, who, yeah. He he never surprises me. He, he is exactly what I expect him to be. I wish he would surprise me. I wish occasionally he would do something that wasn't predictable. But everything well, he I does is he predictable. Would, yeah, I didn't think he would pick a... Well, but picking a fight with the Pentagon is probably a good idea right now because they may be the... Those, the military brass may be the ones that need to escort him out of the White House. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, you know what? Here's, here's what I see as happening... Uh, in the uh, in the election, okay, uh, he's going to win the election on election night because all the votes that are going to be counted are those that were done at the polls. All right, well, and the people who are going to go to the polls are going to be Republicans. The people who are going to mail in their ballots are Democrats, and so That's he's right. going to declare himself the winner. And then when in the next couple of days the mail-in votes come in and it turns out he's not the winner, he's going to challenge that and say, I'm not accepting those results. That's correct. I, I told you that, and that, that was part of my doctoral dissertation. It's a rally around the flag. People like to have immediate winners and losers. They don't like waiting around. Trump is going to declare victory and... Uh, and move on. Well, and they must have hated it when Al Gore ran for president because that thing wasn't decided for a good month. That was yeah. annoying. They were looking at those things. What like was crazy. the one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you remember the Al Franken? What? People should be interviewing Al Franken uh, about this situation because Al Franken lived through that. And and that's essentially what's going to happen. Now, Al Franken eventually was declared the, the winner, and I think it was that even was Yeah, he, 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 his was... Um, 
I think it was like, am I wrong about this? But it was, I seem to remember it being something like three or four months before they had a winner. It wasn't until July that he was able to take his seat. Yeah, yeah. And then Kennedy died in August. And so the Democrats really only had a, 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 a filibuster-proof Senate for one month. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's also the possibility, I read something about if it goes to the Electoral College and then the state legislatures have to decide, and right now mm -hmm. state legislators are, are, are Republican, but they could shift to Democrat. There's all kinds of things in play. I have, uh, there's a consultant from Australia who, who, who says he sees armed insurrection. Uh, there's, a, there's an article in The Nation about Trump and a coup d'etat. Uh, I mean, could you imagine the coup d'etat and president, U.S. presidency in the same article? Uh, it's unbelievable. It's, it's really a unprecedented time. Well, I mean, you know, we are living in a time where that's possible. I mean, all you have to do is elect the one person who's not willing to leave office and wants to be made dictator for life, and 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 you you got a mess going. Now, what he doesn't have, what he doesn't have on his side, which most people who overthrow a country or stay in power forever have, is they have the goodwill of the military, who then helps to keep him in, to keep them in power. He doesn't have the military on his side right now. I think the military is extremely neutral. Well, but yeah, I don't. The military is not going to back him, though. How they can't stay in power without the military. Yeah, how neutral are they going to be now with all this crap about him calling, you know, lifers in the military as losers, you know? And yes, he can deny it all he wants to, but even Fox, who is his, uh, his, his, his bitch, uh, has come out and said they have checked these stories out and they're true. Okay? So, um, I don't know if the military is that happy with him right now. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not willing to believe that story. Um, it's prima facie. What's well, the, well, you don't have to believe it, but the fact of the matter is that people who... Uh, Fox went out to try and find out if it was true or not. They wanted to... I'm sure uh, you know the answer they wanted to come up with, mm -hmm. you know? And they said we went out and checked it out, and yes, he did say those things. We focused so now much those on people, those people are saying I never heard he him say. He called John McCain a loser over and over yeah, again. Yeah, but forgetting that for a second, somebody to, born yeah. pointed this out that certain people have come out like Bolton and said I never heard him say such a thing. Well, Bolton, you weren't in the room when he said it. You know these other people who said they were, and I think Kelly is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, were in the room when he said it. So just because they never heard him say it doesn't mean he didn't say it. No. But even if he said it, you know, why is it such, why is it, I understand why it's important, why it can be a story, but why does it get so much extra legs? You know, uh, because he's, he's supposed to support the truth. He's been right. talking about he's, he's, he's the commander in chief for crying out truth. loud, Bree. <laughs> War, what war has Trump started? I guarantee you, if Hillary Clinton had been in office, we pro we I mean, there's credible evidence that we would have been at war with what? somebody. Well, well, where, where, where do you get the credible evidence, Bree? Come on. I, I now now you're sounding Trump. like Trump. Yep. I, I think Trump is not a warmonger president. In fact, he's kept them in check. He's called John Bolton out many times. You know, it, it, in in it's. It's quite clear, you know, Bolton wanted to go to war with Iran. Of course and he is <laughs> not a war president. He was a draft dodger. <laughs> well, I, I think that there were a lot of people who were trying to get out. But he's not the only one on that front. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. Now, uh, let, me, let me bring up something. You know, yesterday uh, I did my Monday show. Uh, which has kind of become more of a tradition. I just did it once to see if it would work, and now I do it every Monday because uh, it appears as though uh, the that? people who call it like calling it, and uh, mm -hmm. and we get numbers for that show, which are off, uh, off the charts. Um, unlike here, where we have are doing much better, by the way, so far as the number of people over a given day watch the show on YouTube. 
and uh, listen to it on uh, and watch it on uh, Facebook. Um, we've gotten some of the best viewership that we've had, but that show just off the charts. And you were there yesterday, right, Brian? Yeah. What did we talk about? We didn't. Were we? 9-11, 9-11. Yeah. Where, where where were you? Yeah. And uh, yeah, stuff like I that. I don't think we talked about Trump once, did we? No, no, not once. Yeah. I don't think so. You know, and I think I listened what, to it. Huh? Too. Yeah. I listened to what? it. I'm trying to remember what. Time. Wasn't that a pleasant show? Oh yeah, it's very good. It's very civil. A bunch of very civilized people. So, you know. Um, so I keep thinking about, you know, what did we talk about yesterday we could talk about now? We were talking about 9-11. And, and it's funny that it came up because it came up generically in the course of conversation. And then I looked over at my calendar and realized that Friday is 9-11. Yep. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it was kind of like, where were you, you know, when 9-11 happened and how did you react to it and. Uh, well, next year it'll be the twentieth. It'll be the twentieth next year. Yeah, God knows we have to put up with it every year. So on the twentieth, it's going to be like uh, I don't know parades. I I don't know what you do for that kind of tragedy. You know. Where were you during the pandemic? Yeah. Be the next Where were you during the pandemic? <laughs> I was uh, listening to Alex Bennett. On There's night. only one answer for that. Where were you during the pandemic? And that at was home. at home. home. <laughs> you know, I mean, end of conversation. Yeah, end of conversation. <laughs> That's all we need. My, yeah. uh, my mom is, is, is in Pittsburgh, but she booked a travel trip to Kentucky. Yeah. Something about yeah. a park being rebuilt or something. And you know, I've tried to convince her not to go, but she won't hear it. She said, well, you can't stop living. And... I said, well, you know, we're not, I didn't, I wasn't asking her to stop living. I was just saying, take a pause on traveling, you know, which is different, but she's having none of it. So she's going and Kentucky, it doesn't look so good right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I just, uh, I, 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 you know, I would love to go out to California, go see some friends, spend a weekend out there. No, no. I can't do it. What? At first, I got to get on a plane. That's a petri dish, and then I got to go out to yeah. California, which is a secondary petri dish. Mm. Um, In summertime, you're gonna have to wear a mask anyway because the fires. So yeah, you got yeah right. What's the difference? <laughs> you know, one of the fires that, that started over the weekend, it already had 200 acres by like Sunday night or something. It was a reveal party. It was a yeah. gender, gender reveal, reveal party. party. Yeah. Yeah, so they had the pyrotechnics and it blew off blue, and it, they did it right in this like field that was all dried up weeds. Like, and like, and that's like where the fire coffee. started. That's where it started. Yeah. Oh boy. This is in California. Oh, they're gonna find them. They're gonna find them. Like I don't know how much. I think eight million or something. But they're gonna find those people who lit it off. But yeah. They just picked up a hat like the college recruit kids do. You know, <laughs> and put cake. it on. Yeah, cut the cake, right? Yeah, yeah right. Well, no, I can, look, I can yeah. see that they were, I don't know why people have these gender reveal parties, but they have them. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's a kind of a cute way of doing it, you know, blue fireworks, okay? But you don't, you, you know that California this time of year is a Tinder box. You don't yeah. have, you're a fucking moron if you don't know that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, even if you do nothing, California is going to go up in flames every, every you know, late summer. Yes, Charlie? Well, speaking of fucking morons, did you see the story about how over 250,000 COVID cases have been connected to that Sturgis motor, motorcycle? Thing? How many? 250,000 now? Yes, 250, at least 250,000 cases have been connected to that. 250,000? Well, I would imagine yes, that... I imagine that was not necessarily the 250,000 people who were in Sturgis got it, but they went home no, and, they sp went home and, and spread, spread it. it to other people, and the yeah. 250,000 cases have been attributed to Sturgis. Oh, boy. You know, I mean, we have nothing but morons galore. Yeah. You know? That's right. And, and I, I'll tell you what I'm seeing now. 
You know, I, I really want to say to everybody, if you want to start a riot, I wouldn't do it right now. And the reason I'm saying that is it only gives fuel to Trump's fire, okay? Which then got me to thinking, because I saw this, did you see the video of the guy who uh, they threw a Molotov cocktail and his feet caught on fire and he's dancing Ooh. around doing a fire Bill flaming, Steve, he looked like, yeah. a, like a, a tiki dancer <laughs> from the, you know, and I'm not going to laugh because the guy went and got some severe burns. Yeah. But the point, point was, was that all I could think about is who threw the Molotov cocktail? I'll bet it was a Trump supporter. Because all you got to do is go in there and create this kind of scenario. I mean, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past Trump to actually have people going in and starting a lot of these, these uh, events. Because a lot of times they talk about how peaceful these demonstrations were, and all of a sudden they turn bad. Oh. And it's like, it's like somebody went in there and fanned the flames. Remember they were dropping off those pallets of uh, bricks one guy filmed on Facebook, and you know, Facebook, Facebook, but he was saying, look at what's going on here. They had a federal building and they had all these bricks. He said, there's no construction going on here. Why are all these bricks here? You know, like that people were planting stuff to start the riots. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I, I really question who who's causing all these problems. And I don't think it's the demonstrators. Uh, you know that guy, umbrella guy in Minneapolis after George <laughs> Floyd, he was connected to a, one of those right-wing hate groups. He really? was going around smashing windows. That started the riot. Yeah, with the hammer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, my question, and also, the kind of demonstrators that we have, even in the Black Lives Matter court uh, uh, group, are not not violent demonstrators. It's not the nature. You know, what are you doing? You're protesting against not being violent. And and I just think, I, I'm very suspicious of all of these demonstrations when they turn bad. The provocateurs haven't gone in there. And did you see the one where the Trump supporters were having a rally and some Black Lives Matter people were also having a rally? And so the Trump people started beating the crap out of the Black Lives Matter people. And I mean, literally stomping on them. Uh, and, and, and I'm going, geez almighty, you know, has it come to that? Are we so divided that we're beating the crap out of each other? And it really wasn't the Black Lives Matter people who were beating the crap out of anybody. They were getting the crap beaten out of them. And I go, I'm watching this, I'm going, God, in my lifetime, I had to see this, you know? And I thought, when I was a kid growing up and I saw the McCarthy hearings and I saw uh, stuff like that going on, I thought that was the worst it was ever going to be. Hmm. That was happy times. We go back and That's look right. at it, you know, we look at that as being living the life of Ozzie and Harriet. There's no way I'm taking a punch for Biden or Trump. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I bet it'd be a lawsuit on the other end of that. Well, no, you, of you know, I, uh, uh, th there are times that I just, you know, I, I just go, God, this is just, this has gotten ridiculous. You know, um, I just, I don't know, I just, I just want everybody to get along. <laughs> Aren't they taking it a little too serious, too? They get to kill each other? I mean, this is nuts. Well, I'd say that's serious, when they want to kill each other. Yeah. I mean, can't you just stop them and say, listen, are you really for real? Well, what I love is the fact that Trump got behind this guy who came out with an AK-47 or something and shot two people yeah, to death. Yeah, that kid's amazing. And then walked down the street and said, I did it, and the cops drove by him and waved yeah, at him. Yeah, they said it's okay. <laughs> what? He like what? A kid who Fortnite. And doesn't amazing. Trump realize that he's creating this sense yep. of permission for people to do this sort of thing? You know, I mean, it's it's horrible. And he's got, wasn't he guarding like a? I think I saw the video too where the kid was guarding a TJ Maxx. What are you doing there? Why, why would you even? 
everything is insured in there. Kid, go for it. Listen, this, this you know, if, you, if, if somebody wants to, uh, I, if somebody wants to burn down a TJ Maxx, I consider that an, yeah, I consider yeah. that, hey, I, cons hey. I consider that an aesthetic <laughs> choice. You know, it's like we were, mentioning, we were mentioning yesterday with 9-11, you know, there, you in New York City, you remember this, Tony, and I'm sure I'm sure Jeff remembers this. Oh, yeah. There wasn't anybody in New York City who didn't think those were the two fucking ugliest buildings in this town. <laughs> right? Yeah. We used to refer to them as the boxes the computers came in. Yeah. You remember yeah. that, Robert? I said it, yeah. So when they when they when they when the planes went in and the things got leveled, my only thought was, well, you know, Osama bin Laden's a horrible guy, but at least his aesthetic choice is pretty good. You know. I like him. I mean, and believe me, they didn't go back and say, you know, we so miss the World Trade Center. We're going to build two more buildings just like that. Different no, like no, that. we built something completely different. Yeah. You know. Uh, yes. You know, I, yes, I went into uh, a hospital on 9-11. And uh, everybody was like set up because they knew about 9-11. Yeah. And they figured that millions of people... We're going to be so many dead people or people who are sick, and that they'd have to bring a bunch of them out to Connecticut. Yeah. To the hospitals there, so I'm at Yale New Haven at the time, and uh, they're like all set up and don't do anything because we're all ready. We got to stay here. We got to be ready. Nobody ever showed up because they all died. And that was true in our school district as well. Same thing. Take the largest school in our school district. Mind you, we were across the river, but we were across the river via the Lincoln Tunnel. You could have been there in 10 minutes. So mm, yeah. sure. they set up one school and it became a triage unit. There were 100 cots on the gym floor. And the saddest thing of all was to see no one there hours later. Yeah. You know, you almost kind yeah, of I was, I, for somebody. I, I, to I was going to say, if help. you wanted to triage people who had been in those buildings, they all died. Yeah. I mean, there, there were no survivors in that. Oh. You know, and I don't know how many people got hurt on the street below, but I don't think there were that many. You know, they, they just went running. Um, but you know, uh, during the during the fires, they had the sort of the same thing. <clears throat> they have a, one of these fires that were going up, and they said right when that one went up, they already had the community center where they started having it set up for people to go, mm -hmm. for people to stay, and all this stuff. And those are playbooks, and those are playbooks, the same thing after 9 11. It was a playbook that they started immediate reactions. When people keep talking about Trump again, there was no playbook. They just sat there. So when people kept saying, oh, he did stuff, no, you see how the fires and those instances, they did stuff right away. And, you know, we sat on our ass for a long time for the pandemic. Wow. Well, you know, 9-11 um, was terrible. I mean, New York has seen some pretty terrible things from time to time. But, uh, it, you know, what always got me, though, was the aftermath that people kept going, oh, we've got to we've got to we've got to stop uh, those foreigners from coming here and we can't let Muslims move into this country and blah, blah, blah. And who knows uh, if this is going to happen? And I go, where do you live? And they go, I live in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And you go, oh, you, you're worried about terrorism in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I live in New York City and every day I take the subway. OK. Mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody wants to create a terrorist act, the New York subway system is it. In fact, I'm surprised nobody ever got bombed yep. the New York City subway system. Yep. Somehow, either we've been too vigilant or something like that, but I don't think we've even found a bomb down there. I think the only reason why I don't think the terrorists... Oh, you're auto-tuning again. Now to the subway, they want to do it with the trade center on that time. Yeah, it's kind of. Can you do Tony? Uh, you know what I'd like you to do because your 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 um, internet you connection is such that your picture is perfect, but your sound is like yeah. you're auto tuned. Oh. So if you'd like to start great. singing, now's the time to do it. Yeah, sounds <laughs> great. <In the> bathroom. <laughs> 
bathroom. Mom's got to go use... to the bathroom. Mom. Oh, you... oh, God. <laughs> there he goes. Don't forget to take the toilet paper with you, Tony. Wash your hands. You know, whenever he leaves to take his mother to the, uh, to the damn bathroom, we are left with those drapes and that wallpaper. I mean, it looks like the set out of Psycho, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's he saying to Mom? Is he saying anything we can hear? I, we've never seen his mother, by the way. No, that would kill the whole thing. She may, she may, what? Yeah. What? That would kill the whole thing. It would kill the whole thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's better to imagine. Yeah. The theater. Yeah, but like Jeff theater says, think if there's no mother. Theater of the mind. Think if there's no mother, it's Tony's mind. God, I'm, <laughs> I'm tired tonight. Last night, I couldn't. You ever have those nights where you wake up every 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, last night, I went, I went to bed. I slept till about 6.30, 7 o'clock. Got up, had to go to the bathroom. Uh, I'm sure you guys all know that. And then uh, I, uh, I went back to bed, and I fell asleep. And I woke up, and I said, what time is it? And it was 15 minutes later. So I went back to sleep, and what time was it? 30 minutes later. I kept waking up all night. So, you know. Did everything come out okay, Tony? Yeah, she she gets nervous when she gets up. What time is it? So I lie about the time. So now, in case people have <laughs> never never seen this situation before, uh, Tony makes his living yeah. taking care of his mother. The it's city actually everything. pays him money. How much do they pay you a year to do that? Well, I get 20 an hour, and I get 55 hours a week, and I get, like, I would say about eight hours overtime, and I'm getting so oh, much. Okay, so how things. much like, money is that? It's not crazy, man. Okay. I gotta, I it's like, more than I'm making. <laughs> but it's but twenty sure dollars. Wait a minute, let me figure this out. Anybody good with them uh, numbers? Twenty times how many? Fifty-five. Fifty-five hours. So that's a th thousand. That's over a thousand dollars right there. Mm -hmm. And I get like I think six hours overtime a week. So so that's time so, and so a it's half. about sixty uh, sixty hours good. sixty hours times twenty. What is that, folks? Uh, uh, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred dollars. a week. A week. Less. That's, Tony, that's, 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 that's almost five thousand dollars a month, or to put it even nicer, close to sixty thousand dollars a year. You're making, wiping poop off your mother. You have no travel expense. <laughs> who's Tony? Who's paying for the money? Well, it's through the health insurance through the yep. city. So it's a, it's, a, it's a, <clears throat> the other ones cover so much, and then the other ones kick in. So yeah. it's kind of like two twofold. Yeah, who? You know, well, she's because she's handicapped too. Because she's handicapped. But didn't oh, Kevin yeah. say he was doing the same thing for his mother, for his mother? Yes. Yeah. Is he getting paid too? He said he didn't care about the money at the moment. That he made changes. Hey, hey listen, that. if I were making fifty thousand dollars a year, and I'm going to tell you the truth, to take care of Marjorie, I'd make sure she lived forever. <laughs> what, what? 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 Tony? <laughs> the reason why I get it is I didn't want a stranger in the house to be in yeah. Let's be honest. I'm tired of packing boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. But yeah. But yeah. But I, my father would. I would. I had to do it because I couldn't. Live I'm a stranger. Take care of my mom. Yeah, but you that. didn't want to keep packing hats for your yeah, goddamn that, uncle. Bad. That job. <laughs> you no, like wait, well, wait a minute. How much was that job paying you a year? Like thirty-five thousand a year or something? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's cheap, Alex. Come yeah. on, I couldn't yeah. take it anymore. So you're making <laughs> more money out of your yeah. sick mother. Yeah, you know, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. I've been having me three months. But away. forget it. Don't try and tell me you're a loving son, okay? You know, yes, Robert. You know, I'm starting to rethink my stance on universal health care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think about how I could get my wife. There you go. Because he sees her mother every day. Yeah, it, yeah I mean, I really... Actually, no old joke aside, I couldn't. 
I mean, it is kind of rewarding because I can actually monitor her all the time. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes she's needy, but she, you know what? She gets on your nerves a little bit. Like, I'm trying to read. It's like, Ma, enough already. <laughs> One time I told her I'm off duty. She's not going to get <laughs> on your, uh, she's not going <laughs> to get on your nerves enough for you to want to kill her because that's your bread and fucking butter. She showed me how to make eggs. She's good with that. I'm actually learning how to cook more because she's telling me how to do it because she remembers everything. So I have a sit down. We were doing eggplant today together. It was nice. I made her bread. Did eggplant? Eggplant should not be eaten by anybody. You want to see the product? I have it. Is anybody here who likes eggplant? I had it tonight. Did you really? with uh, this one eggplant, Bagan Barta. Oh, God. It looks like a mutant. It looks. It looks like a mutant olive, you know. <laughs> I just, oh, what? What are you gonna do? Make me vomit now by showing me your eggplant? No, actually, it's all fried. She oh. has to. You put it in egg and then breadcrumbs and some, you really? know, season it and then you fry it up. I don't know if you ever had it like this. I, I'm gonna have Marjorie make me some eggplant some night. If she knows, if she deal. even knows how to do it, I, you know, I don't think I've ever actually had eggplant because. It, Kind of like it. It plant looks season. like it should be coming out of you rather than going in. Check, please. Huh? We have a with check, shrimp. Check, too. please. Yeah, yeah. Um, who did we lose in there? Oh, oh, we we lost Brian there. He's gone for a moment. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, what is? Oh, he's got his eggplant. Well, that's that's not eggplant. Uh, egg what the hell is that? Oh, that's a um, that's a zucchini, isn't it? Some um, zucchini. <laughs> yeah, some. Uh, some kind of squ- some kind of squash. <laughs> Where they judge a man based on the size of them. Yeah, what, yeah, they cook a bunch of Vietnamese food. It's, it's just squ- like what it, it, talking wait a minute, about. that squash, right? Yeah, some kind of squash. Yeah, some kind of huge, you, humongous. You squash. From her sister's garden. Her sister has a huge garden, so they keep bringing. Up over all the time, so it's good. Yeah, well, you keep bringing that over, and after a while, they're not going to need you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? and you talked, and you talked about how eclectic the Monday shows are. Here we are talking about zucchini. <laughs> no, actually, it's egg. squash. Well, it's squash. That's a squash. If it was zucchini, right. it would have right. a stripe on it or something like that. You know, the other thing I've never been able to get a taste for cucumber. Oh, I and love it's not, I'm yeah, I'm, I've never been crazy about cucumber. And, and every cucumbers now and then, at huh? Costco. Costco, they have the three long cucumbers. Oh, yeah. those are so good. Chop really? them up. Yeah, I just never. I some. I I understand why people like it, and there are people who love cucumbers. And but I just I you know it tastes like a bad watermelon to me or something. You, you know, know what I like? I like the pickle on the sandwich, like. Oh, well, we all like the pickle on the right. sandwich. The but that's the one time, see, that's the one time I like cucumbers is when they're, when they're pickles. Then yeah. I'm, I'm mad about that. I can eat them all day, you know. Yeah. But okay. then you're they taking something that's absolutely disgusting and making it good, you know. But anyway, hey, listen, I think we've run out of time here. I think it's time to play the theme here. Uh, Charlie, always good seeing you here, you know. It's, uh, it wouldn't be a show without you. Uh, and, and and thank God there's no baseball. Otherwise, uh, you know, you wouldn't be here every night. Uh, Robert, thank you so much. Calling in from New Jersey. Uh, Jeff up there in Connecticut. Uh, out there in California, it's wear a fucking mask. Uh, <laughs> Brian. And, of course, Tony and his mom. Thank you, you Tony. And Bree, thank you from Kuala Lumpur. If all of you would do a big favor and give a big wave goodbye, I'll give you a big wave goodbye back. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another one uh, uh, assembling any moment now. Yes, any moment now over there on the intersection with Jack Bishop. And uh, it should be a pretty good one, too. He uses Skype, so you'll use a Skype number, which is GabNet Live. In the meantime, I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow night uh, at uh, 8.30 is the sports show with the franchise MC. I'll see you at 10.30. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. And, hey, be safe out there and wear a mask, okay? 
Okay. 